Good day and welcome to Boone in the Woods and in the Home, a weekly program that talks about our businesses, hunting, things for the home, but we also incorporate a lot of scripture. Hello, my name is Nathaniel Boone and this is my wife Lisa and together we are the owner and operators of Boone in the Woods, a hunting property management business that's focused on food plots, mural mixes, food plot uh, mixes as well, and you can find everything at boonepodcast.com. We're also the owner and operators of Lisa Boone Designs, where we retail products that are artisan quality, that are awesome for furniture, for canvas, for all kinds of art. We have lots of tutorial on the website that you can look at to find out how to use the products. And we are local retailers here in Madisonville, Kentucky. So if you're interested in these products or in having your furniture custom painted, you can contact me through boonpodcast.com. So today we're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to take the topic of resilience, um, kind of working off of last week's podcast, and we're going to break it down into seven different segments. Each segment is going to have an anecdote and scripture to go with it. Now, this is something that is not only going to be beneficial for business, but also for personal growth and for spiritual growth. So get a pen, get a note, get your Bible, and let's do this together. If you're listening to this on the local radio station, which is 103.5, if you didn't know, we're on there every Monday at 4 p.m., go ahead and visit theboonpodcast.com to access the video or the audio podcast so that this way you can take some time and go through it maybe with some friends and family as well. And let us know what you gleamed out of this podcast. I think this is going to be very beneficial. So number one here, we're going to be talking about stewardship in business practices. Just as a farmer tends to the land, cultivating and nurturing it for bountiful harvest, business owners steward their enterprises. This mindset involves wise resource management and ethical decision making. So the scripture is Luke 16, 10 says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Much like you have to be stewards of your children. He holds us accountable for how we train them up, what we do with them, how we treat them, what we teach them. And it's the same thing with our wealth, with everything that we have. We are literally stewards. When the moment that you start thinking that you, this is yours, I did this. I created this empire. I, you know, started this from nothing. You are way off because everything that we have has been given to us by the Father and we are stewards of it. And so when you start thinking about it that way, it really does change your perspective, I hope. You know, what are we doing with what we've been given? He definitely wants us to take ownership of it, to take care of it. You know, my first thought with, uh, you know, talking about the farmer and cultivating the field, you know, a farmer, if he doesn't take ownership and he doesn't steward or take care of the field in the way that it should be taken care of, then what's going to happen? It's going to be over, overtaken with weeds. That's right. If you don't put the right fertilizer down, if you don't put the right weed control, then it's going to be overtaken. Mm-hmm. And it's just much like our spiritual life. If we don't steward our spiritual lives, right. you know, we'll be overtaken. Just yeah, that's like right. our children, you know, we have right. to keep our kids in line. So just like you said, so it's... Yeah. And it's just like, you know, are the weeds people in your life? Are the weeds, you know, things that you're doing that are not holy? Like what what are the weeds? Are you stewarding your job? Mm -hmm. Your nine to five? Are you... Ownership of it. That's right. Because we're required to do that. Um, You have to have full buy-in, whether you love your job or not. Um, how people perceive you is how they will receive you. So are you an ambassador for Christ? Are you speaking truth? In everything that we do, we like to get that pat on the back. We like to, uh, one day we're, we're going to enjoy hearing, you know, well done, a good and faithful child, you know. That's right. So we, we, it's just 
words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. People, people do. Uh, they love it. They long for it. So integrity and transparency. It says honesty isn't just the best policy. It's the foundation of trust in business. Mm. Being transparent fosters strong, lasting relationships with customers and partners. That's right. And the scripture that we have here is Proverbs 11 and verse 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. That taught me growing up that I was always better to be honest in whatever, whatever the case that I would be in less trouble if I was honest with him mm-hmm. and if I told the story and tried to get out of whatever I, you know. So, and it proved down the line, not only did it help me, but it also helped the relationship because my dad knew mm-hmm. or mom, you know, either one, they knew that, you know, I was going to tell them, regardless if it was going to get me in trouble or not, I was going to tell them the truth if I was asked a question or Whatever the case may be, you know, mm-hmm. so it's always better. So is your business, uh, do you have it built upon honesty? Mm-hmm. Do you have, uh, can people trust you to do what you say you're going to do? Mm-hmm. Can people trust you that you're going to pay them what you say you're going to pay them? Mm. You know? Yeah. There, there's you know, lots of variables there. Lots of variables. There are. And, you know, as a business person, and again, if you don't own a business, picture yourself as a business owner where you work. OK, so apply this to your life however you need to. If you're not trustworthy, then, you know, how can how can people put their trust in you? Mm-hmm. And so it matters how people again, how they perceive you is what they will receive from you. So. Are you someone that is full of integrity? And not just saying that you're going to do something, but doing it without saying it. Like, can someone count on you? We talked about vulnerability last week. And people need to see you vulnerable. You know, the true, authentic you. Mm -hmm. If they can see you, um, you know, going through adversity, going through trials and tribulations, and you're you're you love people and you serve people, like if they see that, it leads them to the cross. We become that beacon of light when we're vulnerable, when we're trustworthy, when we're authentic. This is one of the keys to leadership. So you might not think of yourself as a leader, but if you are a believer then you are a leader because we are supposed to be Mm. leading others to Christ. Mm. A great leader is not a micromanager because when you empower someone, you really build them up. You have to trust and respect your team, your Mm. partners, those that are around you. Um, Otherwise, why are they there, right? We have to treat people the way that we want to be treated. But honestly, we should be treating them better. Whenever I was underground, um, I had the same, you know, I would never ask anybody Mm -hmm. to do anything that I wasn't willing or able to do myself. And uh, so that, that went along. I I didn't care to get in there and shovel to do whatever needed to be done right along with the guys at the same time. Uh, you know, one, one boss on a unit of, uh, 20 guys, you know, 10 entries, then that's a long span and I have to put trust I had to put trust in those guys to do their job safely. Right. And because not only were was their lives in my hand, but my life was in their hands. So I had to mm-hmm. trust them. Yeah. And, and they, you know, the other the rest of the guys had to trust one another. Right. You know? It's a camaraderie where you build people up and everyone's on the same team. How can people trust you? If you're dishonest or if, you know, you're only at 90 percent, but you want everyone else to do 100 percent, you your character matters. And if you make a mistake, own up to it, acknowledge it, move past it. That teaches people that's part of that vulnerability that we need to portray. And we need to, again, lead by example. I like it. Yeah. Compassionate leadership. Leadership isn't just about leading. It's about serving. Mm. Leaders who understand the needs of their team and community and lead with compassion create resilient and united work environments. Mm. So Galatians 5, 13 says, serve one another humbly 
in love. Who was the ultimate leader? But Jesus, right? Yahusha. He, the Christ, the Savior, was a servant leader. He did everything to teach us what we needed to do. We're supposed to follow him in everything. So if he's a servant leader and he washed the feet Mm -hmm. of his disciples, how much more do we have to be servant leaders? Because if you're a believer, you work unto him, not unto man. And so it doesn't matter what their personality is, if you like them, if you don't like them, we serve the Father. If everybody served the Lord, then we wouldn't have to talk to people in a in a rough or a hard tone to get our message across. Hello. Oh but my goodness. Is, that's not the way that it is. And then no. you've got these people in in job sites that they're holding their feelings on their shoulder because yes. the boss looked at them the wrong way. We we come at leadership from a compassionate standpoint, meaning that we don't demand the work. We explain it, you know, so it, it requires more time, you know, a little bit of coddling. Yes. A little bit of explaining, but we tell them that this is the job. We explain it. We have manuals. We have standard operating procedures. Now we have all of these things that we have to do, but Uh, We also have to have interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, customer service, all kinds of management skills in order to lead effectively. Everyone has to be on the same page. And sometimes you can't treat everyone the same way. Everyone learns differently. Mm -hmm. And so you have to speak their language in order to get it across and communicate. And so you have to be compassionate. You have to have grace. You have to have mercy. And you have to, again, lead by example. And so it's it's not easy dealing with people. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. And, but, you know, like we can't just assume. We can't assume as a business uh, person, as a leader. We can't assume as an employee either. We don't know all of the things. And so we have to come at it with respect. Again, we have to, we've built that trust. We need to trust our people and we need to give them some rope. If they make mistakes, we fix it, right? Oh, I thought you were going to say they would hang themselves. They could hang themselves. That could be a thing. It could be. Yeah. But when we delegate jobs, we have to give them the opportunity. You have to give them the right tools. Yes. If you don't give them the right tools, then you're just set them up for a failure. That's true. But provi- assuming, assuming that you've given them all of the manuals that they need, all of the operating procedures, you've given them the tools, you've given them, you know, add a boy, you have to add a boy comes later. Well, you have to give them the opportunity to either do it right or make a mistake and allow them the opportunity to come to you. You know, don't blow a fit because something went wrong. Don't yell and scream, you know, and have a hissy fit. That isn't Christ-like, but in respect, okay, we need, this is wrong. We need to fix it. We have to remain humble. We have to love and we have to be kind. Because those are the attributes of the Father. Resilience through adversity. Winter can be harsh, but just like trees enduring cold winds, businesses face challenges too. Faith helps weather storms by fostering resilience and perseverance. And then James 1, 2, and 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So I'm perfect. (laughs) Nobody's perfect but the Father. But I'm going to ask you this. Will you weather the storm with honor and dignity? Because that's what it takes. And again, we're going to mess up. We're going to fall short. What are you going to do to make it right? P. 
people are always watching you, whether you think it or not. Sometimes you don't realize just how intently people are watching you. People are watching the words that come out of your mouth. They're watching your body language. They're watching your facial expressions. They're watching your social media content. What are you sharing? What are you posting? You know, I know a lot of people that are always blasting and ranting on Facebook. Guys, that is part of your character. What about those people that are driving down the roads in the company truck with the oh. company logo on the side <laughs> and they, they're, they're, they're driving ridiculous or speeding, you know? Or, so yeah, people cutting people that. off. Yeah. People people see that. Or maybe using fingers that you don't need to be using. Ooh. You know? Yeah. And people see that. Yeah. And you may not know that they see that. You know, yeah. people watch everything that we do everywhere that we go. And, you know, I don't know if you even think about this, but if you're applying for a job, you better check your social media because guaranteed, guaranteed people are going on your social media before they even interview you to check out who you really are. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at applications, it is the first thing that I do. I go on social media. But I don't really tell you who they are. But it gives me that an idea. It gives you an idea somewhat of who mm -hmm. they want to be. It could be, you know, it in, could in be some cases, yeah. in some cases it does show you who they mm -hmm. are, you know. Yeah. So, you, you know, as a hiring manager, we're going to look at it globally. We're going to look at, you know, what you wrote down, how your application is. Is it sloppy? Like w the words that you use, is it grammatically correct? I mean, all of these things people are judging so that they can make a decision. Yes or no. And so it matters. But. We're saying all of that to say every single aspect of your life is being watched. People are looking. Mm -hmm. They're making assessments of who you are or who you portray to be. What your character is. Right. And they sum it up to like, this is this person's character. This is who they are. Is this someone who I can trust? Is this someone who I can, you know, give a prayer request and confidence to? Is this someone who will lead me and mentor me? Is this someone who I want in my life? And, and it goes hand in hand. Again, this is business. This is personal. It's a spiritual. Mm -hmm. Every single aspect of our life is focused around our character and how people perceive us and what they think about us. And so are you leading by example? Are you someone who's uplifting and encouraging, conducting your life's affairs with holiness, with grace, mercy, honor, dignity? Are you that person? If not, you need to question yourself. What can you do to change? How can you turn your business around and be somebody that people can count on? That's right. Uh, but, you know, it really, it, it all starts at, at home. It you, does. If you're not that per person as a person, if you're not like that as a person, then you're not going to be that as a business. No. So number five is patience and long-term vision. Like a farmer patiently waits for crops to grow, business owners need patience for growth. Having a long-term vision rooted in faith helps in times of slow progress. If you are a leader, are you showing people that you have a vision? Do they know what that vision is? Do they know what they're working towards? That's why we have to be those compassionate leaders that explain the job, you know, a little bit of hand holding, a little bit of loving on the people goes a long way. When you are the boss and you have people under you, they need to see you leading with love. They need to see you being kind and humble, especially if you have people under you that manage the staff. Let the people that manage the staff manage the staff. Mm-hmm. And then you do the loving, you do the, 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 you know, the other things, the guiding, the mentor, the mentoring. Number six is embracing change and adaptation. So just as the seasons change, businesses must adapt. Embracing change guided by faith leads to innovation and growth. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 and says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. 
Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Are you flexible? Are you able to recognize the signs to pivot? Can you see the challenges coming your way and know, okay, I know I had this plan, but this came unexpectedly and now I need to do a course correction. Are you intently listening to the Holy Spirit who is your guide? Who is the one that tells you those things? You know, are you following him? Today, I mean, of course, I try to have a schedule as far as what I have to do. And so sometimes you have to be a little bit flexible. Mm -hmm. I got a call today from someone and uh, to do a special project in the state of Kentucky. And so we're going to, I had to change my plans for tomorrow and to adapt to his schedule to get this special project going. And I may tell a little bit more about that later on, but you know, Boone in the Woods is, going to be doing a little project with the state of Kentucky. So that'll be a pretty, pretty neat little deal going on. Yeah. So it could be, yeah, it could be good things that you have to pivot. It doesn't necessarily have to be bad things. A lot of times we attribute change to bad things, but change could be blessings. And you might miss your blessing if you are so difficult about change, about, you know, things that come your way because you're so focused and you're like, this is where I have to go. But we have to listen to the Holy Spirit every day, every day. What are we going to do today? Father, ask him, Every day. Holy Spirit, guide me. What are, what do you want to accomplish today? Who do you want me to talk to today? Who do you want me to bless? What do you want me to do? Number seven. Personal growth and reflective practices. So personal growth is like tending to one's spiritual garden, regular reflection, learning and seeking wisdom, help individuals grow and contribute positively to their businesses and communities. So Proverbs 19 and verse 8 says, He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. Mm. He who keeps understanding will find good. That's right. I love that. I love that so much. And this kind of summarizes everything that we've been talking about. But, you know, I talk about journaling and maintaining a schedule and being flexible, And knowing when you have to pivot, when we have to pick up something else up or help someone. And that's perfectly okay. But we need to have a plan and you need to have something that you're striving towards. So what I've added to that in my journal and my I have a bullet journal, so I have to like literally write everything out. But what I've added is at the end of the month, I do a reflection and I look at my past month. I look at the goals. I look at my tasks. What did I miss? Where did I fall short? You know, why did I miss it? Why did I fall short? Did I meet all my goals? Did I set my goals a little bit too low and because I surpassed them? Like you analyze that. You reflect. If you wait till the end of the year, like we had talked about a few podcasts back, you know, to look back at your past and see why you've made certain mistakes and where you are, where you are and why you're there. Um, It's better to do that monthly, at least monthly, and look back. Because if we need to make a slight course correction for February, it's a lot easier to do than if you get to the end of the year and you look back and you're like, I accomplished nothing because I've been there. I've done that. Sometimes, you know, you get behind or you get in that slippy slide motion Mm -hmm. and you don't realize uh, just how long it does affect you. Right. And it does hold you back. It holds you back. Yeah. So the thing is, you know, if you can redirect while it's still fresh, we can actually make better decisions for the next month, for the next quarter, for whatever's coming next. Don't wait to reflect at the end of the year. Do it now. Let me give you this little bit of advice. It's a little tip that I learned back when I worked in corporate America. I was a supervisor and I was trained, you know, with the interpersonal skills, interpersonal skills, customer service, excellent customer service, all that, all of that stuff. I was learning about all of it and how to, um, how to handle people. And also we had to do hiring job interviews and reviews. Now that's might sound fun and easy, but it's hard if you do it with everything that you have. 
And we were judged on seven different categories. And we were always told that you, it doesn't matter who the employee is, you can't ding them for more than two things. So you had to pick out of the seven categories, one to two categories where they needed to um, improve. So there were, those were their areas of improvement. Everyone has areas of improvement. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are in life. Everyone has a couple of areas of improvement. And you don't want to demoralize someone and you don't want to, you know, them to feel bad about themselves. So that's why even if they were like the worst employee ever, like we're, we weren't going to humiliate them. We were going to give them at least average marks and then one or two areas because that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. You know, he doesn't tell us the list of all of the things that we have done that are horrific and so unholy. Mm -hmm. He does it one at a time. And he, and it builds our confidence. And we, you know, as, as a person that's a leader, it's so important that we encourage, that we guide, that we're there, that we support people. Words of affirmation. Yes. That we affirm people and we build them up. And so. That's what I was just thinking. You mm-hmm. know, uh, one of the illustrations that we were always given or used was, you know, when you're climbing a ladder, you know, and I was always a type of person to always, I didn't stay at the bottom of wherever I started at on a job. I climbed that corporate ladder or however you want to put it. But the thing is, it's not just you yourself grabbing, but if you've got somebody right here beside you, you're supposed to be helping. Mm-hmm. Pushing like, them yeah. That you're going as well. That's right. So it's helping one another. It's so important. And it goes back to the iron sharpens iron. Like it always goes back to that. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Like it always goes back because we are supposed to help one another. So we'd like to leave you with this. It's John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know what it means to be saved, listen up. We all fall short of the glory of the Father, and we all need a Savior. We are not perfect, like we've talked about. Mm -mm. We were born into this world in our flesh. In a, in a, it's sinful. It doesn't matter what we do. We're always going to be sinful. But once you recognize that you are a sinner and you need a Savior, and you ask Him to come into your life to cleanse you of the sin, of the impurities, make you white as snow. He will do it. He asks you to repent. That means to turn your back from all of the things that you used to do, the places you used to go, the people you used to hang out with. And he starts working on you. That's the Holy Spirit that we talked about. Starts working on you slowly and he starts transforming you. But it's important to have a mentor. It's important to have someone beside you to hold your hand and guide you and answer your questions and be there. And if you you could be that person, for somebody. But if you need that person, reach out, let us know. But ask him to be the Lord of your life, to to save you because we are wretches. <laughs> if you do that, you can do that from anywhere. You don't have to have a you don't have to have corporate. An yeah, you don't have, you have to have, have an corporate enough, setting. Yes. Right there at home, wherever you're at. That's right. In the woods, in the deer stand. In a toilet. Yes. Anywhere you are. So if you do that, congratulations. You are now a co-heir with Christ. You are now a brother or sister in Christ with us. And we welcome you into the fold. So we would love to hear from you. Send your prayer requests and your praise reports. Let us know if you accept him, the father, as your um, Lord and Savior. And then go ahead and follow us on all of our social media platforms. We would love to be connected with you. If you have any questions, like I said, reach out to us. And you can do all of that by accessing boonpodcast.com. Don't forget, tune in every week and uh, catch us right here on the radio or Check out our social media pages in the podcast app. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Again, you can see all of our podcasts on boonpodcast.com. And also check out our business pages while you're at it. 
We hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Good day. Ciao.